Hello, this is a quick tip user guide for staff and teachers at PBNC for the Staff Incident Accident Injury Report form with integration to the Student Safe Schools Incident Forms for School Administration. PBNC has worked with Clever to create a digital form for incidents that occur at the workplace. This new form replaces Employee Incident Injury Report HR number five the school's safe school incident reporting form number 20 and allows employees to report violent incidents that occur at work. This new form will allow for ease of reporting, greater ability to track and report incidents at the workplace, and will help make our schools safer places to learn and work. After you have logged in to the Clever form with your username and password, you will land on a page with your name only. We are using a sandbox training uh, profile for this particular demonstration, so no real data on students or staff will be saved or used. When you open the screen, you will see one record with your name on it. You click it open and the page that you land on is the most recent record. If you have done a previous record in Clever, this information will appear and it could be a submitted form that you've done already or it could be a new form that you are currently working on. If it's a submitted form and you want a new form to work forward with, you simply press the Create New Form button and a new form will appear as your most recent record. There is also the ability to use the Records button at the top menu to select a new record. They both do the same thing. I have a form partially set up for demonstration purposes so we can move through quickly. You will see your name, your staff ID, and your current work Bayview School location is what we're using for this demonstration. Please note that there is a completion bar. This is to track how many of the required fields are completed within the form. As you move through the form, you will end up at a submission tab. You will not be able to submit unless this completion bar is at 100%. The form is pretty straightforward. The first tab you begin with is the incident report. You would go through and complete all the information. As you can see, it pops up to tell you that it's a required field. There's a note here to submit to explain what the required field is about. You quickly go through and ensure all the required fields are completed. You just click on the field and enter the information. School location, it's important that you select the school where the incident happened. It's important that you check off where in the location the incident happened and give brief information. As you can see, the first tab is at 94% complete on required fields. So before we leave this screen, we should make sure that all the required fields are completed. You enter in if there was any witnesses, their phone numbers, and whether they were directly involved or indirectly involved. Were there students involved in the incident? If you select yes, a new screen pops open for you to enter in the name of the student. You just begin typing it and you get the selection of, of students 
that you can choose from. Was the student injured? Yes or no. And if the student is a special needs student, you go yes, no, or don't know. This particular checkbox is very important. If the incident should involve a safe school incident report, you have to ensure that you check it. If the incident does not involve safe schools, do not check it. You can add as many students as you need to that were involved. Again, completing yes or no to injuries. I will select yes for the student, and you can see that the record has now been saved as the safe schools record in another form. You complete the details in the text box, and then the type of incident believe that it's a suspension under section 306. You would select what the incident was, and then you would go down and you would select what was happening. At the very bottom of the form, there's a copy information to the Safe Schools Incident Report for the students identified. It's important that you press this. This will transfer all the information onto the new Safe Schools form for the principal. If you were injured, you would go to the injury details. There's a yes or no. If it was no, you would simply move to the next tab. If it's yes, you would go through and complete the items that are requested. If you get down to the time lost or no time lost from, the, um, from your employment due to this injury, you would select yes or no. And you can see that the information pops up as needed. So you could, would complete and open up the workers form six, which will pop up as a PDF on your computer. Print that off and complete it. If you're going to be absent from work beyond the date, of the injury, you would need to notify Human Resources and the Health and Safety. This is an automatic notification, so you would check off that yes, this is what you want to do, and then you send notification. It automatically dates it and sends an email to the appropriate people. When you get into health care, did you receive health care for this injury? Again, it's a yes or no. If it's no, there's nothing more to be done. If it's yes, there is information that is required for you to complete. It's very straightforward. And again, notification to the appropriate people. If you're unable to return to work, please check and the notification is sent to Human Resources and Health and Safety. When you send notification, it dates it and sends the emails. If you have um, employment elsewhere, you will need to complete this area. If you have any prior conditions, there's details, you would select yes and fill in those details. And then the instruction is that you move forward to the next tab if it is a workplace violent incident. Again, the option is a yes, no. If it's not a workplace violent incident, you would just move on. If it's yes, there is information to be selected and completed on this tab. You will need to complete if it's who was involved in the incident, who the aggressor was. And once you get to the bottom of this tab, there's information if an employee was involved, yes or no, was the employee injured. You can select notifications if there was an injury and you want to notify your supervisor and the, your human resources, you would select this, send the notification. 
If this incident involved your supervisor, you can just send the information directly to the superintendent of human resources again by checking yes and sending the notification. If you have documentation that you need to share with the, the HR department or the other people being notified, you would simply choose the file after you've scanned it to your computer and saved it. Give it a name. I gave it teacher name, medical note, text. And then you would hit upload and it'll now that the form is complete and the completion bar shows 100% of the required fields as completed, you can do your submission. Opening the tab, you'll see the question, are you ready to submit this incident accident injury report? You click yes. Information opens up. There are two submit buttons. The first one is the one that will send notification to the school administration supervision of the location where the incident happened and also to the human resources department. This will also be the default submit button. If you were in a location that is not your usual work location and you want to send the information also to your supervisor or school administration, you can select this checkbox here. Once we hit submit, the form will be locked. You will not be able to go in and make any more changes and the notifications will have be sent to all the appropriate staff. You'll get a pop-up that says submit, you select OK, and it's done. After you've submitted the form, you can go in at any point and review the supervisor's investigation tab to see what has been completed by your supervisor. But you cannot edit anything else on the form. If a student was added, uh, to the school, to a say school incident, the uh, administration will be notified by email and they will have uh, the ability to go in and complete that form. This concludes the uh, information on how to complete the new incident accident injury report form using Clever. If you require any further technical assistance, please do not hesitate to email at support at clever.ca. Thank you.